Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Short Stories with Miss Tanya. We're going to continue now uh, with our book, Sideways Stories from Wayside School. And this is part five. And we are continuing on chapter 22 with the three Eric's. Okay, let's get started. In Mrs. Jewell's class, there were three children named Eric. Eric Fry, Eric Bacon, and Eric Ovens. They were known throughout the school for being fat. Eric Fry sat at this end of the room. Eric Bacon sat in the middle end of this room, of the room. And Eric Ovens sat at the end of the room. There was a joke around Wayside School that if all three Eric's were ever at the same end of the room, at the same time, the whole school would tip over. Eric Bacon hated jokes like that. That's not surprising. After all, he wasn't even fat. In fact, he was the skinniest kid in Mrs. Jewell's class, but nobody seemed to notice. The other two Eric's were fat, and so everyone just thought that all Eric's were fat. I'm not fat, Eric Bacon insisted. What's your name? asked Jason. Eric, said Eric Bacon. Then you're fat, Jason concluded, and pretty soon, Skinny little Eric Bacon, the skinniest kid in Mrs. Drew's class, had the nickname Fatso. Hmm. Eric Fry really was fat. He was also the best athlete in Mrs. Drew's class. His body was solid muscle. However, nobody even noticed. The other two Eric's weren't very good at sports. Eric Ovens was clumsy. Eric Fatso became uh, Bacon was a good athlete for his size. But because he was so skinny, he didn't even have much power. So, naturally, everybody just assumed that Eric Fry was also clumsy and weak. After all, his name was Eric. Whenever the other kids chose up teams, Eric Fry was the last one picked. They never noticed his home runs or the fabulous catches he made. Like all great athletes, he made the impossible look easy. Of course, the other kids did not uh, did notice the one time that he dropped the ball. Eric Fry was playing right field. Terrence belted a deep fly to left. Eric Fry raced all the way across the field after the ball and at the last second dived at it. He caught it in midair on his fingertips, but as he hit the ground, the ball squirted loose. Well, what do you expect from Butterfingers? said Stephen. And since that time, Eric Fry was ha um, and since that time, Eric Fry has had the name Butterfingers. Eric Ovens was the nicest person in Mrs. Drew's class. He treated everyone equally and always had a kind word to say. But because his name was Eric, everyone thought he was mean. Fatso was mean because everyone called him Fatso. Butterfingers was mean because he always had to play right field. So naturally, everyone just assumed that Eric Ovens was also mean. They called him Crabapple. Good morning, Allison, said Eric Ovens. How are you? Lay off, Crabapple, will ya? Answered what Allison. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Hmm. All three of the Eric's had nicknames. It was better that way. Otherwise, when someone said, hey, Eric, no one knew to whom he was, he was talking. One time, all the Eric's would answer. And the next time, none of them would answer. But when someone said, hey, Crabapple, then Eric Ovens knew they were talking to him. And if someone said, hey, Butterfingers, Eric Fry knew they meant him. And when someone said, hey, Fatso, Eric Bacon knew that he was being called. Hmm. Those aren't really nice names. That's kind of me. All right, next one. Chapter 23, Allison. Allison had pretty blonde hair and always wore a sky blue windbreaker. Her windbreaker was the same color as her eyes. She was best friends with Rondi. Rondi had blonde hair too but she was missing her two front teeth. Allison had all of her teeth. 
Allison used to, uh, used to say that she knocked Ronnie's teeth out. Allison was very pretty, so all the boys in the Struls' class teased her, especially Jason. But Allison said, leave me alone or I'll knock your teeth out like I did Rondi's. The boys didn't bother her after that. One day, Allison brought a tangerine for lunch. She took the peel off in one piece. Miss Mush, the lunch teacher, walked up to her. Allison, may I have your tangerine? She asked. Miss Mush always gave food to the children, so Allison was happy to give her, give her tangerine to Miss Mush. Miss Mush shoved it in her mouth and swallowed it in less than four seconds. Allison left the lunchroom and walked down to the library. The lunchroom was on the 15th story. The library was on the 7th. Allison already had her book. She just went to the library because it was nice and quiet there. The librarian walked up to Allison. What are you reading? She asked. Allison told her the name of the book. That sounds like a good book, said the librarian. I've never read that one. May I borrow it? The librarian always lent books to the children. Allison was glad to be able to return the favor. She gave the librarian the book, then walked down the stairs outside to the playground. All of Allison's friends were playing freeze tag. Allison didn't feel like playing. She reached into her pocket of her sky blue windbreaker and took out a tennis ball. She bounced it a couple of times on the ground. Mm -hmm. Lewis came up to her. Sorry, I lost my place. <laughs> Lewis, um, Lewis always gave balls to the children. Allison, hop, oh, sorry. Lewis came up to her. I'm sorry, guys. Hi, Allison, he said. May I play with your tennis ball? Lewis always gave balls to the children. Allison happily gave her ball to Lewis. Lewis threw the ball all the way to the other side of the playground. Then he went chasing after it. Allison didn't feel like doing anything. Jason ran up and tagged her. You're frozen, he said. Get out of here before I knock your teeth out, said Allison. Jason shrugged his shoulders and left. Allison went back inside and up the 30 flights of stairs to Miss Jules's class. Miss Jules's room. The lunch period wasn't over yet, but Allison didn't feel like doing anything else. She had given her food to the lunch teacher, her book to the librarian, and her ball to the yard teacher. She went inside her classroom. Mrs. Jules was there. Oh, Allison! I'm glad you're here, said Mrs. Jules. I'm having trouble with my arithmetic problem. May you, uh, maybe you can help me. Sure, said Allison. Mrs. Jules always helped the children with her problems. Allison was happy to help. <clears throat> How do you spell chair? asked Mrs. Jules. C-H-A-I-R, said Allison. Yes, that's right, said Mrs. Jules. I knew it wasn't C-H-A-R-E, but I couldn't remember what it was. Uh, that's, not that's not an arithmetic problem, said Allison. That's spelling. Yes, you're right again, said Mrs. Jules. I always get the two mixed up. The bell rang. The lunch period was over. Allison could hear the other children running up the stairs. Allison, said Mrs. Jules, you learned a very important secret today, and I don't want you telling any of the other children, not even Rondi. What was that? asked Allison. She didn't even know she had learned a secret. She loved secrets. You learned that children are really smarter than their teachers, said Mrs. Jules. Oh, that's no secret, said Allison. Everybody knows that. <laughs> These are smarty pants. All right, 24, Damien. He looks a little tired there, kind of sweating. Hmm. Damien had hazel eyes with a little black dot in the middle of each of them. The dots were called pupils. So Damien, so was Damien. He was a pupil in Mrs. Jules' class. Mrs. Jules was about to show the class a movie. She turned out the lights. When it was dark, Damien's pupils got bigger. Damien, said Mrs. Jules, run downstairs and ask Lewis if he'd like to see the movie with us. 
Damien ran down the 30 flights of stairs to the playground. He stepped outside as Lewis was hooking up a tetherball. Hey, Lewis, Damien called. Do you want to see a movie with Mrs. Rule's class? Lewis rubbed his chin. Hmm. What movie, he asked. Damien shrugged his shoulders. I don't know, he said. I'll be right back. Damien ran all the way back up the stairs to the 30th story. Lewis wants to know what movie, said Damien. Uh, does he want to know the name of the movie or what the movie is, or what the movie is about? Asked Mrs. Jules. Um, I don't know, said Damien. I'll ask him. Damien raced back down the stairs and out to the playground. Lewis, do you want to know the name of the movie or what the movie is about? He asked. The name, said Lewis. Oh, okay, said Damien. Damien hurried back up the 30 flights of stairs. He took the steps two at a time. He wants to know the name, said Mrs. Jules. Oh, turtles, said Mrs. Jules. <laughs> Damien turned around, took a deep breath, and then ran back down the stairs. Turtles, Damien said. Hey, that might be good, said Lewis. What's it about? Uh, I'm not sure, said Damien. I'll find out. Damien ran back up the stairs, but, his, but first he stopped to, have, to take a drink of water. What's, what's it about, Mrs. Jules, asked Damien. Well, turtles, said Mrs. Jules. Damien rushed, uh, ran, uh, rushed back down the stairs to tell Lewis. Turtles, said Damien. Mm, no thanks, said Lewis. I don't like turtles. They are too slow. Damien lowered his head and slowly whacked walked up the 30 flights of stairs. His legs were sore. He could hardly breathe and his side ached. By the time he got to Mrs. Jules' class, the movie was over. All right, class, said Mrs. Jules. I want everybody to take out a piece of paper and a pencil and write something about turtles. Damien had missed the movie. But he could still, that he still could have written something about turtles. Turtles are too slow. But now he couldn't find his pencil. It just wasn't his day. Hmm, well, what's the matter, Damien? Asked Mrs. Jules. I can't find my pencil, said Damien. Plus, Damien's pencil is missing, Mrs. Jules announced. What did it look like, Damien? She asked. It was long and yellow, said Damien. It had a black point at one end and the red eraser at the other. I found it, said Todd. Here, by the blackboard. Yes, that's it, said Damien. No, there it is, in the corner by the wastebasket, said Crabapple. Hmm, maybe that's it, said Damien. Here it is, said John. It's been in my desk the whole time. No, here it is, in my hand, said Joe. I found it, said Rondi. Here it is, said Allison. I have it, laughed DJ. I found it, said Myron. Myron, Myron. Which one is yours, Damien? Asked Mrs. Jules. Damien studied each pencil. They all look like mine, he said. Fortunately, at that moment, Lewis walked into the classroom. He handed Damien a pencil. You dropped this when you were telling me about the movie, said Damien. Thanks, said Damien. Said Lewis, I'm sorry. Thanks, said Damien. Okay, class, said Mrs. Jules, so that, uh, so that we have no more mix-ups, I want everybody to write his name on his pencil. Damien spent the rest of the day trying to write his name on his pencil. Damien's pencil couldn't write on itself. It was just like his beautiful hazel eyes with the black dots in the middle. They could see everything except themselves. <laughs> I am a fan of turtles. All right, uh, chapter 25, Jenny. She looks a little worried and she has a motorcycle helmet there. Think she rides a motorcycle? <laughs> Jenny came to school on the back of her father's motorcycle. She was late. Waitside school began at nine o'clock. It was almost 9.30. She kissed her father goodbye and raced up the 30 flights of stairs to Mrs. Jewell's room. I'm sorry I'm late, Mrs. Jules, but my father's motorcycle lost a, uh, there was nobody there, 
the room was empty. Hello? Hello, she cried. Mrs. Jules, Dana, Todd, anyone? There was no one in the room. Hmm. Maybe I'm early, Jenny thought. She took up, uh, she looked up at the clock. It was exactly 9.30. Oh, I hope they didn't go on a field trip without me. She looked out the window. Nobody was there. Not even Lewis. Jenny didn't know what to do. She sat down at her desk. She watched the second hand go around on the clock. I might as well catch up on my spelling, she said, she thought. She opened her desk and took out her speller. M-U-D spells mud. Where is everybody? B-L-O-O-D spells blood. I hope nothing's happened to them. B-L-A-C-K spells black. Jenny heard footsteps coming down the hall. She began to work very fast. H-A-C-K spells hack. S-M-A-C-K spells smack. Someone opened the door. Jenny turned around. Ah! She gasped. It was a man Jenny had never seen before. He had a black mustache and a matching attache, attache case. Hmm. Sorry, guys. Let's see. What is attache? Attache. So, uh, he had a black mustache and a matching attache case. Jenny jumped out of her seat. Get back in your seat, Em said. Jenny slowly sat down. The man walked over and sat down in Dana's seat, facing Jenny. He opened his attache case and removed some papers. What is your name? He asked. Jenny, Jenny whispered. Jenny, the man repeated as if he didn't believe her. Well, it's actually Jennifer, Jenny for short, said Jenny. Hmm, I see, said the man. He took the speller from Jenny's desk. Jenny's name was written across the top. He put the speller in his attache case. What are you doing here, Jennifer? He asked. This is my classroom, said Jenny. Are you sure? The man asked. Yes, I think so. I mean, where is the rest of your class? The man asked. Well, I don't know, said Jenny. Maybe they went on a field trip. No, said the man. They didn't go on a field trip. Well, I don't know where they are, Jenny cried. I was half an hour, uh, half an hour late today, and when I got here, everybody was gone. Really? Did something happen to them? The man didn't answer her. He wrote something on a piece of paper. Tell me something, Jennifer. When you came to school today and saw that nobody was here, weren't you somewhat puzzled? Well, yes, yes, said Jenny. Jenny, what happened to them? If you are really so concerned and so puzzled, said the man, why didn't you work on spelling? Why did you work on spelling? I don't know, said Jenny. It would seem to me, the man said, that if a child came to school and nobody was there, she might play games or walk around or go home, but certainly not work on spelling. <clears throat> Jenny started to cry. I didn't know what to do. I was late and had a ride on my, I had to ride on a motorcycle and nobody was here. And now you're asking me all kinds of questions and I'm afraid of what has happened to Dana and Mrs. Jules and Rondi and Allison. The man didn't answer. A word she said, didn't understand a word she said. Jenny heard her more footsteps. The man got up and opened the door. Two more men came in. One had a black mustache like the first man. The other man was bald. Jenny was frightened by them. Doesn't she know? Asked the newcomer with the mustache. She claims she knows nothing, the first man answered. She says she was late today and when she got here, everybody was gone. Do you believe her? Asked the man with the bald head. Hmm, I'm not sure. She was working on her speller when I walked in. He reached into his attache case and took out Jenny's speller. He handed it to the man with the bald head. The bald man read Jenny's name across the top. Tell me, Jenny, he said. Why are you the only one here? I don't know, said Jenny. Has this ever happened before, he asked. No, never, said Jenny. He gave Jenny her speller. Put this inside your desk. 
Jenny put it away. Hmm, I'm satisfied, said the man with the bald head. Okay, Jennifer, said the first man. You may go now. Jenny got out of her seat. Jenny, the bald man called. Jenny turned slowly. Yes, she whispered. Next time, don't come to school on a Saturday. <laughs> All right, that's funny. Have you guys ever like woken up on a weekend and thought, oh my gosh, I have to go to school? I don't think that's ever happened to me, but probably could. All right, Terrence, look at him. He's picking the ball the other way. And he looks like he wants to cause some trouble too. All right, let's see. Terrence was a good athlete, but a bad sport. Hmm. Rondi and Allison were playing two square with a red ball. Can I play? asked Terrence. No, Allison replied. You have to let me play, said Terrence. Lewis says we have to share the balls. Well, we're not sharing with you, said Allison. Oh, let him play, said Rondi. Hmm. All right, said Allison. We'll play three square. You better play right. I will, said Terrence. Allison bounced the ball to Rondi. Rondi bounced it over to Terrence. Terrence caught it and kicked it over the fence. You have to go get it, said Allison. Shut up, Dixie Cup, Terrence answered. Rondi ran and told Lewis. DJ and Damien were playing basketball. Uh-oh, here comes Terrence, said Damien. Hey, let me play, said Terrence. The lost Terrence, said Damien. You have to share the balls. Lewis said so, said Terrence. Okay, but just throw it in the basket. Don't kick it, said Damien. I won't, said Terrence. First, Damien took a shot. It bounced off the blackboard and threw the hoop. Next, DJ took a shot. He threw it underhand, way up in the air. It came down through the hoop without touching the rim. Then Terrence took a shot. He kicked it over the fence. You idiot, said Damien. Take a train, peanut brain, Terrence answered. DJ went and told Lewis, oh my goodness. Stephen, Calvin, Joe, John, and Leslie were playing Spud. Stephen was it. Everyone else had a number. Stephen had to throw the ball up in the air and call out a number. The person who had the number had to try to catch it. Can I play, asked Terrence. No, said Calvin. You'll just kick the ball over the fence. No, said Joe. No way, said John. No, said Leslie. Sure, said Stephen. Newcomers are it. He gave the ball to Terrence. Just throw the ball up in the air and call out a number between one and five. Okay, said Terrence. The children formed a circle around Terrence. A million, yelled Terrence as he kicked the ball over the fence. What did you do that for, asked Stephen. Eat a frog, warthog, said Terrence. Stephen ran and told Lewis. Terrence looked around. There was nothing to do. There were no balls left. Lewis walked up to him. He was followed by Allison, Rondi, Damien, DJ, Stephen, Stephen, Calvin, Joe, John, and Leslie. What's the matter, Terrence? asked Lewis. There are no balls, said Terrence. Do you have a green ball? No, said Lewis. All of my balls have mysteriously disappeared. Darn it, said Terrence. There's nothing left to kick. Nothing left to kick? asked Lewis. Oh, I don't know about that. What do you think, Rondi? Is there anything left to kick? Rondi thought for a minute, then she smiled. She was missing her two front teeth. Hmm, yes, there is something left to kick, she said. Well, where is it? asked Terrence. Let me check with Allison, said Lewis. Allison, is there anything left to kick? He winked. There sure is, said Allison. What, what? asked Terrence. What about you, Damien? asked Lewis. Can you think of anything? Damien nodded his, his head yes. Well, what is it? asked Terrence. He couldn't wait. DJ, we got anything, we got anything around here to kick? said, asked Lewis. DJ smiled. Yes, we do, he said. Give it to me, give it to me, Terrence demanded. I don't know if I should, said Lewis. What do you think, Calvin? Should I give it to him? I think you should, said Calvin. 
You heard Calvin, Taryn said. Give it to me. Not so fast, said Lewis. Leslie, should I give it to him? Oh, yes, I think he deserves it, said Leslie. Give it to me. Give it to me, Terrence repeated. Do you also think he deserves it, Joe? asked Lewis. Yes, I think so, said Joe. What about you, John? asked Lewis. Definitely give it to him, John answered. John answered. Come on, come on, said Terrence. Reese's is almost over. We'll leave it up to Stephen, said Lewis. Whatever he says goes. Let him have it, said Stephen. You heard him, Lewis, said Terrence. Let me have it. Okay, said Lewis. He picked up Terrence up and kicked him over the fence. <laughs> that, <laughs> that's a little mean. I don't think a teacher would get away with doing that. All right. Um, you know what? I think that's it for today. We're going to have one more part, which will be part six starting with chapter seven with Joy, who looks like she has a piece of chocolate cake. That sounds really yummy. Um, so last part for this book, uh, coming next time. So I hope you guys had a good relaxing little time listening and I will see you guys later. Bye for now.